Hello guys, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of two Iron Age Tibetans. Let's start with the first one, he's a guy, uh, this is what he's looking like, he's predicted to have dark brown color eyes, snub shaped nose and black hair. Uh, with snipper free he is predicted to have brown color eyes, black hair and intermediate skin. Uh, he's got two derived variants in EDAR, so definitely very East Asian facial traits. He's heterozygous for blue eye haplotype 1, no blue eye haplotype 2, or blue eye haplotype 4. And I don't feel the need to write this, but, but if he doesn't have BH2, he also does not have BH3 as well. Uh, and he's got one derived variant in Keto G, which has to do with uh, lighter skin, but it's lighter skin relative to Sub-Saharan Africans. However, relative to most East Asians and Europeans, he would have darker skin tone. He does not have the no-go learner mutation, the European no-go learner mutation in Profidentine Pro variation of DRD2, which means higher odds of schizophrenia, more dopamine D2 receptors. He's actually got A1, A2 genotype in TAC1 variation of DRD2. Uh, the A1 variation is kind of, uh, variant is kind of rare for humans, and it leads to higher odds of ADHD, Parkinson's, and tardive dyskinesia. Uh, he's got this uh, genotype in ACT1 basically slightly increases the risk of uh, paranoia when smoking pot. Uh, interesting stuff. He's got uh, heterozygous genotype in Combs Valmet variation, which means intermediate levels of dopamine in the brain. Uh, it's pretty surprising that for he's an East Asian and he's got the Met genotype here. East Asians tend to have Valval. Now, uh, for OXTR, he's got derived OXTR. He's got the sociopath gene. This is what I call on my channel. A uh, higher risk of autism and lack of empathy. And this is the reason I depicted him looking so East Asian previously. Uh, it's because he's got two derived variants in EDAR. Uh, so he's actually homozygous for EDAR, very East Asian genotype here. Um, and this is a surprising thing. This is something that surprised me is that uh, he's got the one of the European variants, one of the European mutations for uh, lactose persistence. Very interesting stuff. Uh, and uh, finally, he's got the anti-myopia mutation or the mutation that protects against myopia which is pretty cool uh, does not need glasses to see in the distance now let's move on to his polygenic traits he's got a very super high risk score for uh, parkinson's disease he's got a high risk score for coronary heart disease uh, he's got an average risk score for type 2 diabetes uh, he's got a high risk score for brain aneurysm uh, he's got a high risk score for bipolar disorder He's got an average risk score for schizophrenia. Uh, he's got a high risk score for stroke. Um, he's got a uh, average risk score for asthma. Now we're moving on to his GD match results. This is what he scores with Eurogenes K36. Uh, he's scoring mainly South Chinese, East Asian, uh, East Central Asian. But there is also a little bit of uh, South Asian here too, a little bit of South Asian, and a little bit of Siberian as well. There's actually like 1% of Mordic too, but it's kind of interesting. Uh, this is what he scores with MDLP K16, uh, mostly scoring Southeast Asian and Siberian, but there is also 2% Sub-Saharan, which you will see with uh, other calculators as well. He is closest to Nyokshi, I don't know how to pronounce this. He's getting modeled as a mixture of this Nyokshi. I know that uh, Arunachal Pradesh is northeast of India, so he's getting modeled as a mixture of uh, far northeastern Indian plus uh, some kind of sub Saharan African, right? And this is what he scores with the MDLP K23B. Uh, I think the previous uh, calculator Oracle just did not have Tibetans as a reference. Uh, here he's getting modeled as a mixture of two plus Kusunda or various South Asian groups. And this is what he scores with Harappa World. Uh, he's actually scoring 8.8% South Indian, a lot of South Indian admixture, but not a lot of Baloch. Uh, I would expect, I was expecting him to score more Baloch and have more Iranian Neolithic like shift. Uh, he is actually getting modeled as a mixture of Tibetan plus Hasi or Tibetan plus Burmanese, Burmese. Uh, pretty typical stuff. And this is what he scores with the official G25 for the sample, closest to Tibetans. These results don't really make a lot of sense to me because I don't know what the genetics of these groups are like. Uh, this is what he scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. He's actually scoring 83.3% East Asian and the rest of it is mostly Ancestral North Eurasian and Ancestral South Eurasian, which are also partly uh, partly East Asian, They're, uh, derived from Tian Yuan Man, right? Uh, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Cambodian plus Nganasan or Tibetan plus Pengali or Tibetan plus Punjabi. So pretty much a typical Tibetan. And this is what he scores with Gidrosia K3, overwhelmingly East Eurasian ancestry, 91.3% East Eurasian. Actually, I think more East Eurasian than even most Mongols. 
Now we're moving on to the second sample. He's also a man. He's also got YDNA OF100. I think it's most typical for Southeast Asians today. This is what he is looking like. He's got dark brown color eyes, snub shaped nose, and black hair. Uh, he's actually homozygous for one very rare ginger variant. So he's got MC1. He's got derived MC1R <laughs> ginger. Uh, ginger hair mutation. Uh, I depicted him very East Asian here because he's got two derived variants in EDAR. He's got BH1, no blue or haplotype 2, no blue or haplotype 3, no blue or haplotype 4. Uh, Snipper 3 predicts him to have brown eyes, black hair, and intermediate skin. This guy does not have the European no go learner mutation in proferencin pro variation of DRD2, so higher risk of schizophrenia, more dopamine D2 receptors. Uh, he's also got the A1, A2 genotype in TAC1. Once again, he's got the A1 uh, variant, which is rare for humans uh, and is pretty common for Neanderthals, monkeys, various non-human groups. Uh, the A1 uh, variant increases the odds of tardive dyskinesia, ADHD, and Parkinson's. Um, he's got heterozygous uh, genotype in comets Valmet variation, which is also pretty rare to have a uh, which means he's got Val Valmet, and Val and Met is rare for East Asians to have. It's a European allele. Uh, when it comes to OXTR, he has got derived OXTR, so lack of empathy, uh, higher risk of uh, autism spectrum disorder. It's not so atypical for East Asians, actually, to have this uh, variation. He's got homozygous homozygous derived EDAR, definitely East Asian facial traits, increased odds of having shovel-shaped incisors, all that stuff. And he does not have the European... Uh, mutation for lactose persistence. Uh, it's a European mutation, so it's nothing is surprising about this guy not having this mutation because he's not a European whatsoever. Uh, and he does have also the mutation that protects against myopia. Moving on to polygenic traits, he's got a high risk score for coronary heart disease. He's got a super high risk score for gout. Uh, he's got a average risk score for schizophrenia. Uh, he's got a above average risk score for Parkinson's disease, he's got a high risk score for bipolar disorder, uh, he's got a high risk score for asthma, uh, he's got a uh, average risk score for brain aneurysm, uh, a low risk score for type 1 diabetes, and a average risk score for type 2 diabetes. Moving on to GD match, this is what he scores with MDLPK16. Pretty typical result for any Tibetan, modern or ancient. And actually, this is kind of the same result as what we've seen with the previous sample too. Uh, he's also closest to Nishi and Naga. And he's getting modeled also as a mixture of Nishi plus uh, various sub-Saharan African groups. Pretty much the same kind of result as what you've seen with the previous sample. Uh, that's why, and I'm not going to show you the G25 for this sample as well, because it's the same as the G25 for the previous sample. They're pretty much identical to each other. Uh, this is what he scores with MDLPK23B. He's scoring mostly Southeast Asian and Tungus Altaic here. Uh, he is closest to two, followed by Tibetans. Uh, and two are also, I think, in Tibet. He's getting modeled as a mixture of two plus Kosunda, which, which is basically a mixture of two plus South Indian or Tibetan plus Spiti. I don't know what Spiti is at all. Uh, this is what he scores with Harappa World. Uh, he's scoring 7% South Indian, so a little bit less South Indian than the previous sample. Uh, a little bit less Baloch than the previous sample as well. He's actually scoring some Northeast European though. So this is maybe where his BH2 blue or haplotype 2 is coming from in this individual. Uh, he is closest to Tooth here, followed by Tibetans, followed by Japanese. Uh, he is also getting modeled as a mixture of Tibetan plus Hasi. By the way, just talk, think about this, right? Uh, this guy is so East Asian without any kind of European admixture and he's got one derived variant on BEH2. Like, that's crazy. I, I guess he does have a little bit of uh, European admixture, but it's just so tiny and somehow he's got one derived variant in BEH2. I don't know. Uh, this is what he scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. Here he is scoring 83% East Asian. Uh, I think this is a little bit less East Asian than the previous sample. He's scoring 8.5% Ancestral South Eurasian here. Uh, he is closest to Tibetans, followed by Cambodians, followed by Kalmyks. And he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Tibetan plus Somali or Cambodian plus Nganasan. So a mixture of Southeast Asian plus uh, North Siberian. And this is what he scores with Gidrosia K3. Uh, very heavily East Eurasian result. No, I think, this, I think this guy is actually more East Eurasian than the previous guy. Yeah, I think he's actually more East Eurasian. And he's only got 5.5% West Eurasian admixture. Well, now, thank you for watching my video until the end. You can download both of these samples in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Leave a like and subscribe. Goodbye.